Joanna Lord is a global marketing executive with 17 years of marketing leadership experience in industry leading technology companies, where she is focused on marketing strategy, growth, brand, and product marketing. She's currently CMO of Skyscanner, as I mentioned, the world's largest travel search engine, operating in over 40 countries in 30 languages with over 110 million monthly visitors and 100 million app downloads. She's built companies in tech leading cities like New York City, LA, Seattle, and now lives in London. Please welcome Joanna Lord. Hey everyone, welcome to Seattle Interactive Conference. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you're having a great time at the conference so far. Um, I know this year is strange, us all calling in from our homes and doing it virtual, but we'll make the best of it. I'm sure it will be great. Um, I'm going to be talking today about redefining growth in 2020. So my background's in marketing leadership, brand, product marketing, and ultimately, you know, how do you grow a company? Um, and I wanted to talk through today some of the ways I've had to rethink that, reset that, new perspectives I have after um, what could only be called a very crazy year. So with that, I'm going to jump right in. We've got like 25 minutes together. I, I talk fast. I've got a lot of slides. I've got a lot of tips. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, we can always try to cover it in Q&A. So jumping right in, a little bit on me. For those that don't know me, I'm the CMO of Skyscanner. I'm actually based here out of London, so cheers from London. Um, but I've worked in a number of companies, East Coast, West Coast, and Europe. Some of the logos on the screen you might recognize if you're Seattle-based. I actually spent seven years in Seattle, and I'm moving back early next year. Love it there, um, and just very much love this conference and this community, so kind of can't wait to dig in. If anyone has any questions and we don't cover it in Q&A or something else you want to take up, just grab me on LinkedIn or, or you know Twitter or Instagram. We can always like connect and try to find time to talk about it because I know a lot of this uh, you know can be very different based on on your particular circumstance. So um, with that, I'm just going to jump in. You know, disclaimer. I think just wanted to say this. This year has been wild. Um, it's been so hard. It's been so challenging. I hope you're hanging in there. And I think you know. So many of you probably come from different backgrounds. Some of you might be CEOs or founders. Some of you might be creatives of your own independent agencies. Some might be working for companies, small, medium, large. Um, and then some of you might be in companies that have actually really thrived uh, this year as so much has shifted. And, and many of you, unfortunately, much like myself, are in categories that were really challenged this year. So I'm not going to pretend that everything in my slides relates to everyone but hopefully there's something in here for everyone and you can pull a couple lessons out that help you um, best stabilize things for this year and, and really take advantage of, of next year and beyond. I wanted to level set, you know, always I think about growth, a lot of people think of it as the process of increasing, right? So whether it's the size of your customer base, the size of your client base, or just, you know, the size of your team and, and footprint and share a voice. And I think that's how I've always thought of it, right? And I've, I've always tried to connect that to be also, how do you think about revenue? So how does that size also increase your revenue? And growth should be a bottom line exercise. It should, no matter what the activity is or what you're growing, you should have a line of sight of how it's actually gonna drive revenues for your business. But I think if we're being honest with ourselves this year with so much having happened with COVID and so much changing with the customer paradigm and behavior and all the different categories that have been challenged, I think we really needed to expand the definition of growth this year. And maybe it was about thinking, how do we grow our teams and organizations to be more resilient, right? So manage risk, um, plan for the future, recover. How do we think about retaining our customers, engaging with them differently so that when things bounce back, they're there? How do we think about the capacity of our business? Maybe we're thriving, maybe we need to rethink logistics, maybe we need to rethink scale. Um, and, and how do you reset you know, your metrics, your alignment, your teams, your culture to take advantage of this very unique time? So that's kind of what I'm gonna walk through. I'm gonna walk through the top, I think, seven or eight areas that when I think back to this year, I had to really reset across. And what I may have always thought of as growth or thought of as how to work towards growth, I had to really rethink some of those areas. Um, and so we'll just, we'll just jump right in. The first area is really around risk management. And you know I call this make the tough calls fast. And many of us 
you know, when, when we started to see the signals of things changing earlier this year, we, we maybe made some of the decisions, but we were a bit more conservative on them. So we didn't know how long this would last. It's hard to know. Maybe we pulled back a little bit over here or changed a couple things over here, but we haven't necessarily made the tough calls required and fast enough to really set us up for the other side. So what do I mean by that? I wanted to actually just like show it and, and slide some of the areas that I think this means. First and foremost, you need to be willing to really freeze budgets. And I mean bring things down to zero. Maybe it's things like travel budgets or morale budgets or L&D budgets, things that have, are very precious and special to you. You need to protect your cash and revenue to give yourself the strongest place to play from. Maybe you need to turn down investments or kill your investment in the next big thing. So, you know, you've got your core business, you've been playing in some new categories, some new verticals, some new features, and you don't yet have product market fit. You don't have a line of sight of how it's going to serve the bottom line. You might want to pull your foot off the gas faster or sooner um, and more aggressively than you may want to simply so that you can have all the time and energy and focus on the right areas right now. I, I mentioned here, hold the meeting, make the ask. This comes down to your team. Not, no one wants to show up and gets your whole team together in a room and say, I don't exactly know what I'm doing. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna get through this. But the sooner that you can do that, the sooner you can level set with them that this is an anomalous time. It's not just a splash in the plan. You know, we're, we're trying to figure this out, but we're gonna need everyone's help, the better. Um, and I think that gets to making the ask, which is you might wanna actually make the ask of them. How, how can your team best support the company to either survive or thrive through this, this year? And that could be things like changing your working patterns, reducing hours, going on furlough. It could be things like um, taking reduced pay, willing pay, 10 or 15% pay cut for a long period of time. It could be a number of different sacrifices or different ways your team shows up. And the sooner that you have that open conversation with them, the sooner they can respond. Um, and, and really those days and weeks and months add up. So um, I think that's an important part. And then lastly, you know, no one ever wants to talk about a layoff. Um, and I think as leaders, we know this is one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. But in this time, if you're, if you're right now sitting there thinking, maybe now's the time to do it, maybe I should restructure, maybe I should um, you know, let part of the team go or reshape the organization, if you've been thinking about it, you probably should do it. Um, and, and again, the sooner and, and, and likely the deeper, the better. Because so much of this is unknown and we need to protect and, and set ourselves up to reduce the risk in the long run. Um, and that's kind of what I, what I have there, which is you know, reducing your risk is your first and foremost priority as we go in, in, into this year and out of this year. And you can't take your foot off the gas uh, too soon because no matter what, we still don't necessarily know how a lot of this will play out. Um, and you want to really set yourself up to have the most options. And that means that you need to have the most assets, the most cash, um, and the most room to really think about things. Which takes us to our second one, which is about getting the space to breathe. And this is largely about realignment. Um, specifically, it means getting in the room with all the different key leaders, partners, uh, you know, investors, and making sure that we're resetting expectations and alignments there. So first and foremost, meet with the board. Now maybe you've got a, a formal board, uh, you know, a board um, that you meet with you know, quarterly. Maybe it's just founders, maybe it's just some investors, maybe it's just your leadership team. But it, get in a room as soon as you can, if you haven't already, and really say, okay, how are you feeling? What do you expect from us during this time period? And here's what we think we can do. And you have to reset those expectations. Um, the sooner that you can reshape what is expected of you, the more that you can start to stop worrying about missing goals, missing targets and being off course and start thinking about making new goals, hitting those targets and getting back on course. Um, this will involve things like revisiting the forecast, revisiting your, your horizons, irrelevant of whether you thrive in this time period or, or whether you've you know, been challenged, your roadmaps have had to change. Like there's too much that has changed in the ecosystem and for consumers. So maybe you look and say, hey, we're gonna revisit the forecast. These are our new targets. We're gonna reshift these resources over here and this is what we're gonna tackle for the next 90 days. But you've gotta make sure everyone's on board with that and that you do it in a hard reset and it doesn't just happen organically where half your team continues on the old path because they're not quite sure what's changed and half your team goes to the new side. So you really wanna keep that alignment and it, it's critical. Um, I also put on here, you know, kind of emailing customers, clients, just being upfront with them about, hey, we're figuring things out. Some things might change. You might see this feature disappear. You might see this partnership get on hold. Just being open with them to buy yourself some time to work through it. 
um, resetting with your leadership teams on how they need to show up. So, you know, getting in a room and saying, hey, I might need you to take more of this so I can go focus on this, or I might need more of your support on this, right? Whatever it is, just rechanging, you know, changing those working rhythms to make the best use of your time so that everyone's focused on the hardest problems and obstacles. Um, the last two are really more about just time management. So, you know, how can you realign your day and your week and your month to best set you up for success? Um, not just you as an individual, but your company. So this could be calendar bankruptcy. You know, I highly doubt that the ceremonies or one-to-ones or town hall rhythms that you had prior to all this are right for you right now. So maybe you've added in a couple more and now it's time to say, this is what's gonna be our new normal. And just really reset things, don't be afraid. Um, I think a lot of us are afraid to move too much because we want to leave a lot of the stability, but I kind of look at it as like so much change in such a small amount of time. It's, it's, it's a fake stability. Um, blow it up. Embrace the fact that it all has to change uh, and you'll, you'll be better for it. Uh, something we tried at, at Skyscanner introduced a thing called your choice time. This basically was our effort to 1 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Every employee was able to spend it how they wished. So if you were a parent and you wanted to spend some time with your children because you haven't and things have been so crazy, maybe um, you know, you've know you been wearing so many hats you just want to nap or rest, maybe you want to get a good workout in, um, or maybe you just want to work on a project because you've been spending more of your other time on one-to-ones to support your team directly that you want to spend that time on a heads down project. But we opened up that time every single day from one to four to be their choice and it has absolutely increased productivity for our business, um, not to mention just a lot of our well-being and, and mental health. So these are just a couple examples of how you can realign, reset, reorganize uh, to find some space, some time, and just, just a healthier approach to, to this year. Which takes us to the next one. So this is around acquisition. And I think if you've ever heard me talk about growth or marketing or many marketing leaders, you'll hear them talk about acquisition, retention, and monetization. And how those th are the three key levers for growth. And you always need to be thriving and striving and, and all of them need to be getting better over time. But for this year, you know, especially in such a tumultuous time for many categories and verticals, I think it's really hard to imagine acquisition strategies being the same. And for us, it was less about you know, nurturing channels and standing up new channels and brand coverage and brand storytelling. And it was way more about, let's try to understand. Let's actually understand the state of things um, so that we can adjust accordingly. And what I mean by that is really quickly rethinking, how do you benchmark and monitor what's changing in your landscape? Because you might have had product market fit in certain markets, but you might not now. Um, you might have had a competitive advantage prior to this year, and you might not now. So you really need to reset those benchmarks and monitor them differently. You need to be investing in listening tools and customer uh, advocacy groups, uh, sitting down for different sessions with your community and asking them, hey, how are you feeling about our category? How are you thinking about where you spend your money? How are you thinking about spending your time? Um, and the key part is really assigning owners so that this is done on a different cadence. A lot of companies do this quarterly, or they do this every other month, or they do it just when they're launching something as part of a go-to-market. But I think this year, if it showed us anything, is that we need to completely re-educate ourselves on, on what the heck has happened. And so this is, what we actually did is we took owners and we said on a weekly basis, we're gonna gather all the learnings across the business, these different tools, these different sessions, um, state of the unions, market research, competitive research, and we're gonna put it all into a, a weekly digest that's gonna go out to the whole company. So that we're all working off the right data. And I think that's a critical piece to this, which gets into the next one. How are you gonna reset your ceremonies around those learnings? So maybe your company again is more used to um you know product doing their own thing and commercial doing their own thing and but now you have to think to yourself okay well if the whole consumer behavior has changed or an entire category has changed or the way we're working or living has changed maybe we need to get in front of those teams more often and maybe we need to have harder more interesting provocative conversations um, so that's all part of it. it. It will inform your recovery planning. It will absolutely help you know what should you change now versus what might you need to change in six months versus 12 months and 18 months. Your strategy will and should change um, off of these insights. And I guess that kind of gets to the last two, which is once you've got the right data coming in uh, on what's changing in your world and you're starting to curate and pull insights out that could help inform how you would want to change growing your business, you need to make a decision. And I think right now there, there's a lot of companies that are probably stuck in the kind of um, 
you know, stop, go mentality, which is we should do this. Wait a minute, this has happened, recurrence over here, all this, uh, stop, and then start again and then stop. And I think um, if there's one thing that I've seen this year really serve us is we read the data, we figure out what's a trend versus a data point, and then we make a decision, which is like, we're gonna double down on our core business. We're gonna stop investing here. We don't re, you know, revisit that. We can't lose the cycles on constant uh, revisitation. So I think you need to make a decision, you need to stick with it, and you need to have conviction that it's the right path for your teams. Not an easy thing to do when right now so much seems flipped upside down. Um, but for companies that wanna get back on track faster, the teams need to see a sense of conviction around the direction you're going. They need to see the data behind that decision as well. Which takes us to the next one, uh, you know, to that retention pillar I talked about, which is really about showing up in the best way possible. So this means a lot of things, and depending on your business model, it certainly, certainly will change. But a couple of, of areas that we've focused on, I think first and foremost, you have to redefine what engagement and retention success looks like right now. Um, you know, in the past where maybe it might have been LTV or an LTV to CAC ratio, or it might have been, um, you know, engagement rates over time or revisit rates, you don't, it, it just might change. They might not need or be buying what you're selling, uh, was the case for us at, at Skyscanner. You might need to actually think about maybe it's engagement in a different way. Maybe it's about, um, you know, open rates, or maybe it's about visits, uh, maybe it's about shares. You just don't really know. And I think you need to be willing to, for the next, you know, X period of time, revisit those and, and set a new benchmark. Absolutely, we've had to rework our terms or our tone of voice and our creative guidelines. You know, your brand may have a tone of voice that is maybe sarcastic or fun or uplifting or optimistic. Um, and during this time period, to make sure you're serving them best, you might need to pull that back and be a bit more moderate, a bit more conservative, maybe a bit more of a guide or a coach in your voice. So don't be afraid to get your creative leaders in the room and be like, hey, we need to adjust things to make sure we're talking to our customers and engaging them in the right way through this time. Um, other things, authenticity at all costs, so making sure that if you make a mistake or you send the wrong thing or things are delayed or your, your service isn't right because you know things have been challenged, um, that you just own up to it quick. You're honest about where you are, what you're, what you're trying, what you're, what you're not sure of, what you're going to try. Um, you're just kind of sharing that with your customers and your community on a real-time basis. Um, one area that we have seen a lot of success over the last couple of months is investing in storytelling. So you know, oftentimes our creative and our copywriting skills are always kind of pushed into maybe paid advertising or media planning. And since we had some bandwidth there, we actually pulled them over and said, let's share some of the stories that we have right now. And it might be a story of a customer or a community member or an employee or of our team trying to rally behind, you know, a new idea. But we've tried to show more video. We've tried to show more open hearted communication in that storytelling format. Um, and I think it, it really connects with people right now because we're all trying to navigate this year together and there's a really a human element to that that comes together in storytelling. Um, you wanna make sure you're matching the CTA to the state of mind. So one is an example at Skyscanner, you know, it would not have made sense for me to continue to push, go book your flight at all costs or book your hotel. Instead, we had to revisit every asset, you know, across, you know, 40 markets um, in 30 languages and we actually had to say to ourselves what can they do now maybe they can dream about going to new york or plan a trip to new york or revisit a trip that they didn't prior and i think that's how we had to look at this was swapping out to match your site and your marketing and your branding experience to to serve them where they are um, to keep them engaged and excited over time um, and then lastly, just you know, share a voice. I think we're aiming for maintaining and gaining share a voice during this time period. It's not necessarily about growing so much as understanding, hey, habits are changing, market dynamics are changing, categories are changing. Where are we staying even? Where are we losing ground? And where might we be able to grow during this period of time? So it's a really important metric to think about uh, when you think about just like the, the brand impressions around you and your share a voice. Which brings us to probably my favorite growth pillar. And, um, you know, ironically, I talk about monetization quite a bit because it's the most important lever in many ways. It's the highest valuable lever. Um, you can get the most bang for your buck when you invest in monetization strategies, but it's the least invested in often. And it usually involves like rewriting your pricing or your, you know, your terms of subscription or maybe your merchandising or your attach, your cross-sell strategy. It's a lot of areas that oftentimes marketing and product and commercial get into, into some challenges with. But during a time like this where so much is flipped upside down, 
monetization actually is still an incredibly powerful lever. And, and we'll talk through what I mean by that. Right now is a good time to revisit deprioritize revenue opportunities. So, you know, maybe nine months ago when things were more stable and you were on a certain growth curve or you had really explicit goals from your board, you couldn't go explore a new category or a new product or a new client type. But maybe now you can, right? Because it's all flipped upside down. You're realigning on, you're getting some space to breathe. And maybe that new opportunity makes more sense now. So make sure you revisit old ideas. Um, that would be a, a good time to do it. Consider pricing updates. So maybe you know, maybe you run a subscription business and you can actually pull down the price, which is valuable to your customers, but in exchange you lock them into a longer period of time uh, subscription length, right? Or maybe a payment term change. Um, maybe you can sell an add-on or an ancillary. Uh, if you're a retailer, you can sell something else that seems appropriate for the times. And I think this is just about being creative on how you merchandise and how you price during an unusual time for your customers. One that we did, uh, we definitely took advantage of was a new product, which is, you know, we built an internal database of tracking all the travel dynamics that's happening around the world for our use. But we realized this would be a very powerful data product for our partners, right? So airlines, um, airports, uh, you know, planners. And so we've actually brought that to market and we'll monetize that data product. So whatever you're doing now, is there a new way to monetize that to get yourself a new revenue stream while your others rebound? Um, the other one's partnership considerations and kind of getting creative with partner financials. This one's really interesting because especially if you're in a marketplace or you work off a sales function, your partners are also likely quite stressed during this time. And you could go to them and change your payment terms to give them more space. You could give them you know, a reprieve in exchange for better economics and down and, and you know down the line you could have better margins or just better economics because of it. So these are the creative ways where again, if you if you you know get your house in order, if you get yourself some space to think, you can start to think creatively about some of these areas on how you can get more leverage, either negotiating or just pricing. Um, and you you might find some creative ways to bring in revenue that can also not just you know get you through this year, but set you up for an entirely different model um, and a healthier model on the other side of this. So the next one, you know, this one's a, a bit a bit um, maybe provocative, which is I think, you know, just kind of around talent and operations. And I find that often in a time of crisis or, you know, we've never had something where all of us have worked from home like this and so many of the rules of how we engage with our teams and how we work has changed. I think it's very common to want to hold on to the things you've used, which is you know, like keep this. It's always worked for us. We want to, we, again, we want to keep stability. And I think the companies that are really thriving this year are blowing it up. They're shaking it up, they're taking the pain, they're owning it all now, right? And it's because so much has changed. It's almost like you have a reason to be so robust, to be so bold in changing how you work, your rhythms, your structures, and all of that. So explicitly, what do I mean? You know, first, obviously, is kind of restructuring for efficiency. If you've worked in a company, whether you own a team, an org, or the company in, in size and mandate, the reality is you've probably seen an area where it could be improved if you moved things around. And we've probably held off on doing that because maybe you have two leaders and you don't know what you do with the other leader if you move that team around or there's too much baggage around that. And I just say like, do it now. Absolutely do it now. Um, location strategy, maybe you're geo-fragmented, right? Maybe you have offices in certain cities and you've kept them there because they have a great culture, but you know you should shut that office down. It's not an easy decision. It's a deeply personal decision for those teams, but in the long run, if you've been thinking about it for six to 12 months and you could do it now, um, get some cost savings and actually just set yourself up for, for a more efficient structure, you should, um, now's the time. Fire the problem person uh, or people. And I, you know, again, I, I don't say that to be mean, it's just oftentimes in growth seasons, we kind of keep the pain. We let, you know, there's two or three people that don't work well or one really toxic person on a team and but they've been here for forever, they're original gangster. And now might be the time to say, listen, you know, we have to make some hard decisions across the board and, and unfortunately we think it's time to transition you out. Um, so making those decisions, owning up to it, making sure the players on the field are the right players um, is really, it's really critical. Um, creating new ceremonies. So asking yourself, what new meetings do we need? What new rhythms do we need? Um, maybe new trading rhythms, you know, and, and maybe maybe taking away something that you've done every Tuesday because it's just been done every Tuesday, but you don't really see the value in it anymore. Uh, so maybe getting rid of that. And cutting the anchors. Um, I think, you know, 
oftentimes culturally, again, there's a preciousness around things. And it might be, we always invest here because we've always invested here, or 30% of our resources have always gone to that because they've always gone to that. And now's the time to be like, yeah, well, we've never seen this year, have we? And it's never looked like this. And cut that anchor off now. Um, take the pain of the backlash and, and roll it into a bigger change management season um, because you can and you need to uh, because we just can't have those things weighing on us as we work through this. And then lastly, introducing more rigor. So I advise a lot of companies and one of the things I always hear is, well, you know, we want to do that. We want to bring in more of a maybe a you know, calculator approach or a scorecard approach, or we want to introduce OKRs, but there's been a lot of backlash internally. And I think, again, that's a, that's a, um, it's a novelty. It's a nice thing when things are going well. Maybe you can somehow work around it. But when things are so challenged, when every dollar, when every minute, when every customer counts, or you, know, you really have to be willing to be more rigorous. So maybe during this time period, introduce that. Will it be a cultural bomb maybe? Will you have to like hold a lot of listening sessions and bring the leaders and the teams along? Probably, um, but do it now uh, and just take that pain up front so that when you roll out of this season, you're in a stronger position. Um, next up is really getting in the trenches. So this is all about culture. And I think uh, I had actually someone on my team the other day mention to me and say, I feel closer to my peer teams and my leaders than I ever have, even though we've been remote for, you know, whatever, six months it is now. And I thought that was really powerful because, you know, I think in times, in trying times, we really are strengthened in our relationships if we get in the trenches, if we do the work, if we show up. And so that's kind of what this area is about. You know, first and foremost, admitting what you don't know, whether you're a leader or an IC, a manager, just getting on those meetings being like, hey guys, how's everyone feeling? Like you know, here's what I know, here's what I don't know, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna get through this. Um, and just being vulnerable with them. I mean, we're calling in from each other's houses. All of us are like hot messes all around. So let's just embrace it and share that with our teams versus try to show up differently. Um, you might need to introduce new comms cadence. You know, maybe you need to write more frequently. Maybe you need to hold different meetings. Maybe you need to meet daily. Um, you'll decide, but again, showing up the way they need you is extra important right now. Um, on the cultural value side, maybe you want to prioritize your values. So maybe you've always had five or ten values, and maybe one or two makes sense right now. So like for us at Skyscanner, looking around corners and a bias towards action, these have always been part of our values. But we've really leaned into them right now, which is we talk about them a lot more. We talk about the importance of a bias towards action and urgency and speed. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of, you know, level up and really focus on one or two values that would serve you best right now. Um, and then off of that, the flip side is maybe it's time to introduce a new value. So maybe for a year you've been thinking about introducing speed or velocity or urgency, um, or maybe it's grit or perseverance or creativity, whatever that is, but you haven't found a right way because you didn't want to rewrite the values, maybe do it through this. This is a good time to come to the teams and be like, we have to be a different team to serve a different market in a different you know, world, um, and we want to introduce some, some values to help us do that you know, celebrate things, make sure you're taking the time to thank them for their work, but you have to be honest about what rewards are or aren't there. Um, you know, you want to make sure they're not expecting bonuses or things if you can't serve it, but that you are taking the time to celebrate. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a balance, but it's an important one. And the last one's kind of just being, being human and letting things go. I think, you know, you need tougher skin, you know, people showing up, maybe they're emotional, maybe they're upset, maybe they, they thrash out, you know, understanding that this might have more to do with what happened in their, you know, home office that day than it does you. And just being human, saying, hey, do you need some space? Do you need some time? Do we need to revisit this? But do you want to talk about it as well? Like, do you want me to grab the people team? Do we want to share what's going on so we can help you better? Um, not being afraid of those awkward moments that I think really help you show up best for them is really important. So that's a lot. Um, I'm going to kind of wrap this up. A again, I think if you have any specific questions on that, we can tackle in Q&A or just reach out because I know that some of that might have sparked something that really relates to you and your business. But for me, when I think about growth this year, and, I, and I've obsessed over growth for over 15 years, and yet I find this to have been the craziest year of my life. Um, everything I leaned on didn't work, <laughs> and everything that worked I needed to learn new. Uh, and I, I guess it really comes down to this, which is, this year and, and going into next year for many of us, the way to grow won't be up. It won't be about kind of incrementally moving it up. It's gonna be about through. So how do you persevere? How do you restructure, reset, reorganize yourselves 
to be a stronger company on the other side. Um, and I think it's, it's something I've just reoriented my mind to. It's been super helpful for me. Um, I hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, you know, I know it's always hard to kind of give one of these talks and have it touch you know many different types of, of roles and companies, but um, it's been a crazy year and I hope you're getting through it and hopefully some of this was helpful.